Hi, this is John with Fix It Planet. Today we've got an Asus Memo Pad 10.1 ME102A-L and uh, it needs a new charging port. So it's really easy. Just uh, take the back off with a little pick. Just sort of snaps into little clips along the edges. And we're going to disconnect the battery first before we get started on anything. And we're going to go ahead and disconnect this cable here, which is actually stuck down at the battery. So we're just going to pull it up out of our way. Then uh, we've got another cable over here with two connectors, which actually um, lift up from the opposite side as, the, uh, as that first cable. And then we've got two speakers, left and right, connected to the main board. And just I got a few screws. Uh, first, we'll take out the two screws for the uh, speakers, so we because it does go down over the main board. Then we'll unplug the speakers. Real easy to do. And then they're hinged in at the bottom. And they come right out. Set those to the side. And we'll take the rest of the screws out of the main logic board, which there's not very many of them. All but two of them are the same length. These two silver screws I'm taking out now, that one there and this one they're a little shorter so in comparison you can kind of see the two silver ones very short and all the rest of them are like that one now we're ready we can take this board on out that's all there is holding it in and it's super long like I think it's like a foot long even the charge board is long. It's like twice the length of most of the ones that we see. So, eh, that'll be interesting. There's not a lot of uh, components around it. Yeah, it's a little blurry, but it, you can see it's damaged on the inside there. There's not a lot of components around the charge board. So, it'll be easy to get to. Make sure those little clips are closed down so we don't accidentally break one off. Don't want to clamp down on top of it so we're in a safe spot to clamp. I'm having a little trouble with my my flux tube is getting clogged with uh, old flux. Uh, at some point I stopped uh, the video and cleaned all that out and then it came shooting out made a big mess anyway we've got I think five pins four legs zoom in a little closer there see what I can squeeze out of this thing before I had to stop and clean it So, so we're going to get the hot air going here. We're going to preheat that area just a little bit first. There is one small uh, resistor or something uh, there kind of nearby. It's about the closest component, uh, but it's far enough away. I didn't feel like I needed to shield it or anything. And, and we were able to get that off of there pretty quick, so no collateral damage.
And so now I've got solder coming out of the end now. I mean solder. I've got flux coming out real well now. So I cleaned out the the old flux. So we're just going to uh, clean up these pads and tin the pads and kind of get it ready for some wicking. So we're going to wick out uh, the leg, the little post holes for the legs. So first thing we're going to do is, um, I got some kind of crud in there. I don't know what it was. Um, so I'm going to stop and clean that mess off first. Start over. Something was on my solder tip. I don't know what it was. Made everything all dirty. So we're going to start over again. Anyway, we're going to put a little bit of uh, low melt solder in the uh, in those post holes. And I actually put too much, like a lot too much. So uh, wicking these holes out took me longer um than it should have and I also when I was watching um the video back I could see very well but when I was actually doing it I was at a, at a little bit of an angle where I couldn't see straight down over uh and uh I think I got some of these holes cleaned out quicker uh than I thought I did so I think I may have done a little more wicking than I really needed to but no big deal there was a lot of that low melt uh in in these these holes i got too much so i really wanted to get most of that out of there and try to get as much of that out of there as possible like i put way too much so I was using a bigger solder uh, tip. Uh, I like to use that one for wicking those holes out because it works real well for that. But um, it also uh, it also melted a lot of the uh, that low melt quicker than I'm than I wanted it to. Sometimes I use a, uh, a sort of a hooked soldering tip, depending on uh, how much room I have to work. But if, uh, like in this case, I'm just right there next to that resistor on the right, you can just barely see it in this shot. Uh, so I just had to make sure not to touch that with the soldering iron now those holes are actually i think those holes are clear uh but i can't tell because of the angle i'm at when i'm doing this they still looked i mean honestly i think i was half blind i couldn't even see whether the holes were full or not but i think there was um a little bit there so i thought eh. one more time but we're done we're gonna go ahead and tin those pads up a little bit and then clean this mess up and uh, put some fresh uh, flux down and get our our new charge port on there So I don't know, um, this video, uh, like m most of the ones that, that I, that I'm, I'm doing now, I'm trying to do start to finish type of videos. So obviously if, if the part that you're interested in is just seeing, you know, what, what specific part 
uh, it could just be, hey, how do I get the back off? Or I want to see how you put the charging port on or whatever it is. Obviously, you know, once you've seen that, you know, I mean, you you don't necessarily have to sit through the whole video. Um, this video is a little bit shorter because this, uh, this repair is actually really easy. Uh, uh, it's quick and easy to get the motherboard out, uh, so it doesn't take nearly as long to get that out. Got to be careful of that resistor. I'm right there next to it, so watching out for that. Get these two legs soldered in. Get these other two legs soldered in, and then we'll be done with the uh, the larger solder tip. So we're gonna change tips here, and then we're gonna get the. Uh, the pins so like in some of the other videos I've pointed out I don't have a uh, camera for my microscope yet so I can't really show soldering up up close during that process um, if I want to touch these uh, pins up or anything I'll just have to do it and then show you the end result so we uh, basically get it started and then um see if we can get this focused here focus 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 there we go and that's the end result nice and clean and then here's uh the bottom in case you were just wondering nice and smooth and there's the sides nice and strong get a little bit closer to those pins there and we'll go ahead and put this board back in and test it so again like I say uh, this is uh, start to finish uh, at any point you can skip to the part that you're most interested in or whatever I appreciate you uh, taking the time to to look at it if you sat through the whole thing. Um, I think it's kind of fun uh, to to see the whole process from start to finish. Um, now there I go and put that screw in. I haven't even put the speakers back in yet. Hello. I'll figure that out in a minute here. I'll, I'll realize what I did. This is a really easy repair. Um, there I go. Look, I'm getting ready to put that screw in. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm missing something. Oh, yeah. Speakers. Again, they hinge in at the bottom, and then they have a screw. Goes in over the top of the motherboard. As big as those are, as big as those speakers are, you think I would have noticed that sooner. Plug them back in, and oh boy, do I need, my fingernails need clipping. They're way out of control. And uh, again, I'm at a funny angle because of the way I've got this camera set up in front of me. And I cannot see what I'm doing. But I managed to get it, you know, get, get those cables in there. I had to stop and adjust. Right here, I managed to slip them in. And once I could actually see what I was doing, it was much easier to do. We're going to slide the battery connector back in. And you know what? that's all there is to it really just snap the back back on and you're done that whole repair that whole repair will probably take maybe 15 or 20 minutes I would I would allow 30 minutes so you can test everything and in case something goes goes wrong um, snap the back back on um, 
and check for any gaps. I actually had one little gap in there I missed. But I, f I found it later. I snapped it right there. That's I didn't catch that during the video, but then I did afterwards. So went back and snapped it. And there's a SD card, headphone jack, speaker grills, camera and a little microphone hole at the top. Let's plug this charging port in. Uh-huh, we got charge. Now we're going to power it on and uh, just kind of take a look at it. Ooh, I can see myself. That's a scary scary I don't know if I like that maybe I should edit that out so we're gonna wipe down all these fingerprints off of here while we sit here and wait for this thing to boot up And again, just for the sake of start to finish, I'm just waiting for it to boot up. So we can see it has not been charged. Uh, so the indicator is not uh, showing. At the top right, it shows it's charging, but there's another indicator there, uh, kind of in the middle of the screen there to the right. And uh, now it shows, hey, we got 1%. And then, again, magically we moved up to two percent and that's it hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching